Hey guys, let's talk about Sabrina Page Eisenberg. Sabrina was born on June 27th, 1997, and has been missing since November 24th, 1997, from Valrico, Florida. At the time of her disappearance, she was four months old, two feet six and 20 pounds. She's a Caucasian female with brown hair and blue eyes. Sabrina has several marks in the shape of the letter Y below her right shoulder. Sabrina disappeared from her family's residence between midnight and 6.42 a.m. on November 24, 1997. Her mother, Marlene Eisenberg, told authorities that she checked on Sabrina at around midnight and the infant was asleep in her crib. She stated that when she returned to her daughter's room at 6.42 a.m., Sabrina had disappeared. A handmade blue and yellow blanket with imprinted animal images and yellow piping was also missing from her crib. Sabrina has never been seen again. The garage door and one of the doors to the Eisenberg's residence had been unlocked during the morning of Sabrina's disappearance. Investigators found an unidentified blonde hair and a shoe print near the baby's crib as well as seven unidentified fingerprints inside the house. Neighbors told authorities that there had been several incidents involving possible attempted break-ins in the area and homes with small children. One of the Eisenberg's neighbors reported that his dog barked at around 1 a.m. on the morning Sabrina vanished. After letting the dog outside, the man believed he heard a baby crying somewhere in the distance. He stated that none of his closest neighbors had small children at the time. It is not known if the cries the witness thought he overheard were from Sabrina. Sabrina's parents say she strongly resembled her older sister Monica at the time she disappeared. Sabrina may still look like her. Sabrina's hair was brown at the time of her disappearance, but may have lightened to blonde as she grew older. Authorities question why no one inside the Eisenberg's residence awoke if an intruder indeed and abducted Sabrina. The family owned a dog and they stated the pet never barked during the night Sabrina disappeared. Investigators suspected Marlene and her husband Steve were connected to their daughter's case. Authorities obtained permission to place listening devices inside the family's home three weeks after Sabrina disappeared. According to the police transcripts of the Eisenberg's conversation, Marlene and Steve both said that Sabrina was dead during the tapings. Sabrina's parents were indicted on conspiracy and additional charges in September 1999, nearly two years after their daughter vanished. In February 2001, a judge found that investigators lied when seeking permission to place the wiretaps in the Eisenberg's residence. Steve and Marlene were cleared of all charges against them. The judge also stated that there was nothing on the tapes which contained the evidence mentioned in the transcripts of the Eisenberg's conversations. The lead prosecutor in the Eisenberg's case was demoted in July 2001. Steve and Marlene's attorneys filed motions seeking for the government to repay their clients' legal fees in August 2001, given that the charges had been dropped. They received $2.7 to $2.9 million in damages. The amount was later reduced to, to $1.3 to $1.5 million. Steve and Marlene sued again, seeking further damages and accusing their prosecutors of conspiring to deprive them of their civil rights, fabricating evidence, and lying about it. In 2004, a judge dismissed the suit, saying the law gives prosecutors an immunity from such lawsuits about their official actions. A similar lawsuit against the sheriff's office was in 2006 dropped by the Eisenbergs as they decided it was materially imp impeding the investigation into their daughter's disappearance. Steve Marlene and their attorney met with the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office detectives in August 2005 to discuss Sabrina's case. Sabrina's parents were subjected to extensive questioning and they took polygraph tests given by their lawyer and the sheriff's office. The sheriff's office has not released the results of the test, but Steve and Marlene claim they both passed. They have not been ruled out as suspects in Sabrina's disappearance, but have cooperated with the police as authorities began the, the investigation anew. In April 2003, the possibility was raised that Sabrina may be Paloma Unknown, an infant who was abandoned in May of 1998. Paloma, as an infant, was taken across the Mexican border into Texas by a teenage female claiming to be her mother. The teenager gave Paloma to Molly Garza, a Spanish woman who may have been working in the textile industry. Garza was being deported to Spain and could not take the child, so she gave Paloma to a friend who was a registered nurse at a migrant clinic. 
Garza signed her name, allowing the nurse to give Paloma up for adoption. Such off-the-book adoptions are not uncommon around the Mexican border. The nurse gave Paloma to her sister, who raised her with her husband in Pontiac, Illinois. They tried to adopt her, but without a birth certificate or any information on Paloma's background. They were not allowed to. Instead, they were appointed as her guardians. Several agencies have tried to determine information on Paloma's parentage, but come up with nothing. A woman in Michigan saw Sabrina's missing child poster in the spring of 2003 and noticed the resemblance between Paloma and the missing baby's pictures. She called Sabrina's parents, who agreed that Paloma did resemble their daughter. A DNA sample was collect- collected from Paloma and compared to a sample police had of Sabrina's. It did not match. Paloma remains unidentified. Stephen Marlene moved to Maryland with her two older children after Sabrina's disappearance. They continued to maintain their innocence in Sabrina's disappearance and stated they believe that their daughter is alive and living with another family somewhere in the United States. Many investigators still think Sabrina was the victim of foul play. Her case remains unsolved. If you have any information, please call the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office at 813-247-8200.